Hi guys, welcome back to Fit Education's virtual classroom today. In today's micro teach topic, we are going to look at the different functions which are available from skeletal muscle. So this is what it can do, what it can't do in those different terminologies. As ever guys, if you appreciate our content, we'd love it if you could like, comment and share and support us in what we do. So let's have a look at the functions of skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscles work in pairs, resisting the force of gravity to keep the body upright. They prevent excess and unwanted movement, protect the skeletal system, and assist the ligaments to stabilize the joints. These functions are possible due to the four characteristics of skeletal muscle, including contractility, extensibility, elasticity, and excitability. Contractility is the ability to contract Skeletal muscles work in pairs and contract and relax to create the movement of the skeleton. Extensibility is the ability to stretch and lengthen. Skeletal muscle is light and elastic band. If the muscle is pulled too far, it can tear. Elasticity is the ability to return to its original shape. Skeletal muscle is elastic due to the elastin contractile proteins. It can stretch and then recoil. Finally, skeletal muscle is excitable as it has the ability to respond to impulses created from the somatic nervous system. Efficient movement is dependent on the coordinated activity of whole muscle groups and involves varying combinations of different muscle actions happening simultaneously. During any movement, different muscles can be working in one of four different ways, including being the agonist, antagonist, synergist or fixator. An agonist is the muscle which contracts and causes a desired action, such as the biceps during elbow flexion. An antagonist is the opposing muscle to the agonist, which relaxes and allows the movement to occur, such as the triceps and elbow flexion. This process is known as reciprocal inhibition. The synergistic muscles contract to assist the movement of the prime mover, such as the brachioradialis and the brachialis during elbow flexion. Finally, we have the fixator muscles, which stabilize the part of the body that remains fixed, such as the trapezius stabilizing the shoulder joint during a bicep curl. As fitness professionals, we need to be aware that each muscle has both a start and an end point. These are known as the origin and insertion. An origin is always the point proximal or closest to the heart, which is typically the anchor point. Some muscles may have multiple origins, an insertion is distal or furthest from the heart, and this usually moves during contraction. Insertions typically have a single attachment point. We can use the biceps brachii as an example. The origin of the biceps brachii is the proximal attachment point, which is the anterior surface of the scapula. The insertion of the bicep brachii, which does the movement, is the distal attachment point, and this would be the radius. We hope that you enjoyed today's content. If you have any questions on what was covered, please leave us a comment below. Or if you'd like to support us in what we do, if you could give us a like, a comment or share, we'd appreciate your support.